Tennessee Senator Marsha Blackburn, who joins us now. What's this really all about? What difference does it make to America's foreign policy, if any, Senator? One, one of the differences that this makes is it is an unparalleled attack on free speech. You have this journalist who had spoken out about the things that were going on. He runs this online paper, has a lot of a couple hundred thousand subscribers to this paper, and he is telling the truth about what is happening there in Belarus. And of course, there have been many protests against the president, and the people are really pushing back on this administration. But you have a dictator who has the power, and so what does he do? He sends a fighter jet to intercept this plane, to have it to land, and then what does he do? He grabs the journalist and arrests him while this plane is being investigated for a supposed bomb threat that had been made against the plane. I can't work out whether Belarus is on the same side as Russia's Putin or whether they're at odds with each other and how they feel about America. I mean, I simply can't work it out. And I don't know if it's going to make any difference to President Biden or not. What do you think? You know, I think that the, the thing here to watch is how Putin likes to use his proxies, if you will. And he would love to rebuild the Soviet Union. And we know that Russia, China, Iran, North Korea are all in cahoots. And so what you have is a situation where Belarus, who is not a member of the EU, is uh, trying to build favor or act in this dictatorial manner to show that they can be the strong man. And I put this in the same category as you see some of the actions from Chavez that is there in Venezuela and the Venezuelan people that are having to flee that country. And when you lose your freedoms and lose free speech, many times, Stuart, you don't know what you've got till it's gone. And <laughs> I, I think that this is one of those things where people that are uh, especially in the EU, they're looking at this and they see this as a closer threat to yep. them. You don't know what you've got until you've lost it. Uh, how true, Senator, how true. I'm going to show our audience again this extraordinary video that we captured, our Fox um, drone crew. You can see them there. That's about 40 migrants, all of them young men, sprinting across the border. DHS Secretary Mayorkas has said time and time again, the border is closed, it is secure. Quite obviously, it's not. What can we do about this? What we need to do is put the Trump migrant protection protocols back in place that remain in Mexico policy. That worked, that got the border under control. We need to go back to building the wall. Uh, that is something, having those construction they crews weren't. there building that wall, that was a help but they to the border the Senator, patrol. I, I hate to interrupt, you're a United States senator, but you know, this administration is not going to start building the wall again, are they? Uh, they don't want to build of this country have to stand up and be the people. And it doesn't matter to individuals living on that border, whether they're a Democrat or Republican, an independent or a Green Party, they see that their communities are being disrupted, their way of life, their private property rights. All of that is being interrupted by this pushing of individuals across the border. Of course, we have had a situation flying migrant children into Chattanooga under the cloak of darkness and then busing them to other communities. And they've done this even though the governor said, we will not take the migrant children. He declined their request to do that. But this is how the Biden administration is turning every town into a border town in every state 
into a border state. This is how you get these blue city mayors saying we're going to be a sanctuary city and protect these migrants. There have been over 500,000 illegal aliens Ways, but the ones that have been captured since Joe Biden took office, 500,000. That's now, an enormous we number. cannot absorb, these communities cannot absorb this type of infusion of individuals into those communities. Think about uh, communities where the migrant children are going. You've got school systems, health care, child services, housing, sure. and communities are not set up to handle this type of influx. They're just not set up for it. Senator, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Difficult subjects, but they've got to be talked about, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you, Senator. Yes.